2011 is proving to be a year full of reform for the state of Illinois. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and I'm joined by Michael Ferrix, Illinois State Senator and State Director for the Young Elected Officials Network. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, in terms of reform, a lot going on with education and workers' comp. Let's first start with workers' comp and some of the reform ideals that have come um, along the way. Tell me a little bit about some of the highlights, because there's a lot going on in reform. Well, this was a, a long process and we started this after Governor Bogoyevich left office. Last year we dealt with pension reform for new employees and procurement reform and this year one of our top issues was workers comp reform. Now it required a delicate balance making sure that we protected workers rights uh, and there, make sure that none of them were left um, destitute and unable to work but also making sure we have a favorable business climate in the state of Illinois. Absolutely now when it comes to workers rights what were some of the things that workers were really kind of clamoring for in these bills? Well one of the proposals had been to limit access to doctors and we think as we come off this national health care debate, we wanted to make sure that they had ability to work with doctor their choice. But at the same time, make sure they weren't going out and doctor shopping, right. trying to find some sort of doctor who would just sign off on their injury and allow them to collect money without having to work. So and now so, that network has been expanded somewhat. Yeah, so we've given uh, workers a choice, uh, but they have to go through, the doctors have to go through some, some sort of screening to make sure that there's not some doctors out there who are a little less than ethical participating in the system. And this was a long time coming because there are a lot of different elements to this form. Tell me, what did it take to actually get to this point right here? It was a long process of debate. We started this last December. I thought we'd get close to an agreement in January, uh, but some of these parties are just very entrenched. There's a lot of money to be made in this system. Uh, and so it took a lot of effort and pressure, pressure from the legislature to make sure that Illinois remained a place that businesses want to grow, locate, and expand. Exactly. And I'm sure in terms of levels of accountability, when it comes to workers' uh, compensation and reform, that had to have been an element in there too. Yeah, we've had some uh, glaring examples of problems in downstate Illinois, especially within state government, uh, where you've had just lots of people working down in a prison in southern Illinois who have developed carpal tunnel syndrome, aren't working and collecting a lot of money. Mm. And it's not good for the state, it's not good for our business climate, and I'm glad it's something we finally addressed. Let's move on to education reform, certainly a lot going on there, not just in, in your state, but across the country. Tenure, levels of accountability, tell me what are some of the highlights of the reform there? Yeah, this is another issue that the, our constituents have really been clamoring for. Um, you know, the old days of uh, last in, first out, uh, in terms of hiring and firing, uh, will be done now. We're going to move towards more accountability and based on performance, uh, like people see in the private sector. So that, you know, I think one of the big complaints have been when we hit downtimes like we have and tight budgets. Uh, to balance those budgets, they've had to lay off teachers, and sometimes they'll lay off some of their best teachers just because they're new and they have energy. Uh, and some of the teachers have been around for a long time who perhaps aren't performing as well are secured. And not a lot of parents, uh, not a lot of people in business think that's the proper way to deal with it. So I think these reforms would be a great step uh, towards improving the quality of our schools. And in terms of the parents, in terms of legislators, in terms of the school systems, how was the, I guess, the balance kind of um, dealt with in this whole negotiation of who should be responsible for doing what and accountability levels? Yeah. Also, a, a very delicate process that uh, my colleague, Senator Kimberly Lightford, played a very large role in, in getting these people at, in groups at the table. Um, you know, this is, I think there's some initial reforms uh, put forward that the unions opposed, but she was an able legislator and negotiator, and she got to a point where this is an agreed upon process, and it passed with overwhelming majorities out of the House and the Senate. And I commend her on that. And what have you heard from constituents who have been a part of this process, who want the education system to be better, but just haven't known how to navigate it? Yeah, I've heard a lot of positive reviews out of this. Uh, I have a small daughter at home who we're looking at attending off to school in a couple of years. And as I go out to the neighborhoods and I talk to parents, this is a number one concern for them. I mean, after the economy, they want to make sure their children have access to good education and good quality teachers. And so we're going to reward, reward those teachers. And we think that it's going to improve and lift our scores in the state. Um, and that has long-term benefits, um, not just for families, but for the business climate in the state. Businesses will want to be in a state uh, where kids are coming out properly educated, and we have the best and the brightest. All right. Well, I want to thank you for being with us. Some hot topics going on, a lot of reform over there in your state. Thank you, Candace. All right. Good to see you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.